why do I want to provide you with the best content possible to make you a top tier streamer? Why do I want to give you inspiration to go and make money? Why do I want to give you entertainment to laugh? You have to ask yourself these questions, right? Because they already did and they have the answers and that's why they're successful. So let me ask you something. What do you guys think a brand is? Like, what do you think pops into people's heads when you say the word brand? And in my opinion, and a really famous quote, I really agree with this, is a brand is what someone thinks about you when you're not in the room, what somebody says about you when you're not in the room, right? So, i.e., Mr. Slam Hams is entertaining, but I don't like his gameplay. Or his gameplay is really, really good. He's so good at the game, but he's not entertaining. So that's your brand, right? That's, that's you, and that's what people establish you as, right? And so the most important part of creating a brand is figuring out what you really want, it, what you really want that brand to be. Do you want it to just be a game? Do you want it to be you? Do you want it to be a product that you're pushing, i.e. Apple? You know, their brand is always innovating on technology, right? You know, pushing the boundaries, becoming the newest and best every single time. And that's, that's their brand and it works for them. But so let me tell you why Apple is so successful. And let's say Dell Computer Incorporated isn't the Apple, right? So Dell and Apple products, they both make computers, they're both a computer company, they're both a technology company. Apple can release a new iPhone, everybody's gonna buy it, man. People are gonna be lining up out the streets, people are gonna be waiting for days to get that new iPhone. Dell comes out with a phone, nobody buys it. And why? Because people believe in what you believe in not what you do, right? People believe what you believe in, not what you do. So I can sit here and I can tell you all day long how good my content's gonna be, how great it is, and why you should watch it. And that's not very compelling for you to wanna watch it, right? And so that's not why you wanna watch it, right? Like that doesn't compel you to come watch Mr. Slam Hams because I'm telling you that I have the best content out there and I'm always innovating on new content. That doesn't compel many people. Now, what if I told you, I believe that I can make the gaming community a better place and how I can do that is innovating through new content with new ideas every day. It's a little bit more enticing, right? And so that's working from the inside out, not the outside in. And so we're going to get into this, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull out the notepad. So you have building a brand. The, you're going to have three things that you need to build your brand, right? You're going to need a strategy. So let's get into the strategy part. So everybody knows what a strategy is. It's your game plan. It's... It's your bread and butter. It's what you plan to do. It's your strategy on how to do it, right? And so when you're building your strategy, you have to think, one, what is my brand going to be? Two, why does anybody care about what my brand is? And three, how can I benefit you, the viewer, through my brand? Because that's what you guys care about, right? Like I can come in and I can sell you guys the newest and best phone without a, without a label, a logo, a brand logo, a brand logo on it, right? Because that's what drives you. And I can tell you all of the features, all the crazy things it does, it wash your dog for you, whatever. Most people aren't going to be interested in what it does. What most people are interested in is what you as a brand have visioned. And what you have visioned as a brand is going to drive people, man. It's going to drive them because they're going to see what you're doing 
And they're going to want to be a part of it. They're going to want to be the first ones to be a part of that. You tell somebody that you're trying to change the gaming community for the better, they're going to, they're going to want to be there for that. They're going to want to support you through thick and thin the, without any monetary gain or n- no gain at all from the viewer. But they want to be there to support you because that's what they believe in too. So you need to make sure that your beliefs as a brand align with your target audience. And so... A target audience can be many things, right? So you can be a FPS, mainly an FPS content creator, right? You, i.e. me, in a way. They play, you know, they'll play Warzone, Siege, um, Apex, etc. But your brand doesn't have to be constricted to just that one topic. If you're an FPS content creator, it doesn't have to just be FPS games and it doesn't have to just be games. It can be, you can branch off, but you have to do it carefully, right? So your grandma that's 65 isn't going to want to watch Warzone content, but your grandma at 65 might be interested in watching how to create a garden or how to start a garden. And if you made a video on your top 10 Warzone plays and then turn around and made a video on how to start a garden, that's not a very consistent brand at all. You're all over the place and nobody's going to know exactly what your vision is because you haven't established that vision through your content. You don't have to come out outright in every single video and be like, I believe in this. I believe that we should make the gaming community a better place. You don't have to say that. You have to say it through your content and through consistency, right? But uh, I'm getting a little bit off topic. So... Let's say someone plays Warzone, right? Somebody that watches Warzone, you could say it's a safe bet that a majority of them would like to watch Borderlands. Borderlands isn't necessarily an FPS game. And it's not, you know, by any means a competitive shooter. But they align, right? Through the through the content. And so it's a safe bet to say that someone that likes Borderlands, they probably like Fallout. And someone that likes Fallout would probably like New World. It's a a safe bet to say that some of them are going to carry over. So you see what I'm going with this? So it doesn't have to be strictly one thing. And I feel like people put themselves in this box and they just limit themselves to this. And I can only make this content because that's only what works. That's not true. You just have to deliver your same message through those other forms of content. When you're creating your brand, some of the things that you want to ask yourself is, what problems do you solve? What? You know, back to why should people care? Why should I watch your video? And you really have to think, like, you can't just be like, oh, people want to watch my video because I'm good. No, that's not a good enough reason. That's not compelling enough for your mass majority of viewers to want to watch you. All right, so let's give an example here. So, Gary V, right? I don't know if you guys know who Gary V is, um, but his brand is inspiration, right? He creates inspiration through his videos. He inspires you to get out there and go make some money. That's his brand, right? And if you go and look through all of his videos, the most underway, underrated way to make money, um, how to we hit the holy grail of manga, how to move on from a mistake or a bad decision, right? He's inspiring. That's his content. His brand is inspiring content. And then you could go to the other side of the spectrum and you have somebody like Ludwig. He doesn't create inspiring content, but he still gets a lot of views and people still value him as a brand. And why? Because he provides entertainment. He does reaction videos. He literally, his brand is making you laugh, making you have a good time, making you enjoy yourself while you're watching his videos. That's his brand, right? And then we can go to the complete other side, and then we have Alpha Gaming. Alpha Gaming, his brand is educational. He's going to teach you how to be a top-tier content creator, right? Like, that's the value that he provides. 
He's going to teach you how to be a top tier content content creator. He's going to tell you all the secrets on how to get to the top. He's really going to help you reach that goal, right? And so his goals are aligning with yours. You know, he wants you to be a con the top tier content creator. You want to be a top tier content content creator. Why wouldn't you want to watch him, right? It's very compelling for him or very compelling for you to watch his videos for that reason. So when you're thinking about your target audience, wants to align with your beliefs, what you believe in, what you want to do, what, what, what drives you to wake up in the morning to do this, right? You want your audience to align with you. You don't want your audience to, you know, if I'm trying to change the gaming community for the better, I don't want an audience that is full of toxicity and is, you know, trolling content, right? You know, that wouldn't align very well with my brand. So you want to find people that align with your beliefs and you want to ask yourself, what values does your company have, right? Or company, i.e. you. You want to think of, you want to start thinking of yourself as a company, right? If you're taking this seriously, if you're taking content creation seriously, you want to create treat it like a business. You want to treat your content creation like a company. You are the company, right? And so what does your company, quotations, have to offer? What are, what are you going to offer your viewers, right? And I know I'm, I know I'm beating a dead horse. I'm repeating myself a lot, but we're going to get there, I promise. So 50%, 50%, half, half of the consumers buy products based on the company's values. Not on what they produce, not on the quality of their products, but based on the company's values. Because they want to know, does their beliefs align with what they're putting money into, what they're investing in, right? If they're going to invest in your company. They want to make sure that you believe in the same things they believe in. And they don't want to throw money at somebody that's going to do the opposite of what they believe in. It doesn't matter how good the product is. You see people all the time that say, I'm not going to buy an Apple iPhone. Why? Well, because of this, this, and this. It's not what I believe. Or I'm not going to eat McDonald's. Well, why? It's one of the most popular, popular fast food restaurants. Well, I don't believe with factory farming, you know, et cetera. I'm not going to eat there. So it doesn't matter how popular you are, what kind of products you have to offer. If your viewers' beliefs don't align with yours, 50% of them are gone. Just like that. Gone. You're, you're taking them off of the pedestal before they even get there. You're not even giving yourself a chance, man. How are you different from your competition? Because me, Tom, Joe, and the other guy down the street can all be making gaming content, but what's going to compel you to watch me over them, right? What is different about me and my content and my brand that's going to compel people to choose me over them? And so, you know, statistically, you can argue that, um, you know, the people that already have a following, a massive following, people would be more likely to believe in them because they're going to believe the other people that's already vetted them, right? You know, if you go to click on a video and it only has a hundred views, are you really going to take what that guy has to say to heart versus the guy that makes the same kind of video that has a hundred thousand views? Are you going to believe everything that guy, that guy says? Probably not, but you're going to be much more compelled to listen to what he has to say because those hundred thousand people have already vetted that for you, right? So you're approving them with a the mass majority. And that's not a bad thing, right? We need that because if not, then horrible ideas, horrible innovations and horrible people would be brought to the spotlight and be given a platform. And us as a community, that's our vetting system to make sure that that doesn't happen. It's been going on since the stone ages that that's how it works, right? You know, we all decide who's popular, who's not, back in high school, who's the best looking. We decide that as a community, right? So we decide which content creators are the most valuable by giving them our likes, comments, shares, etc. Why are you passionate about it? So why am I passionate about making gaming a better place? Why do I want to provide you 
with the best content possible to make you a top tier streamer? Why do I want to give you inspiration to go and make money? Why do I want to give you entertainment to laugh? You have to ask yourself these questions, right? Because they already did and they have the answers and that's why they're successful. So a, a lot of creating a brand is self-evaluation. Self-evaluation, looking deep inside and really thinking about what do I want? What do I want and what do I want to put out into this world that people are going to care about? And it doesn't even have to be what people are going to care about. What do I want to put out in this world that's going to provide value, that's going to benefit the community, right? And not all people are like that. A lot of people make a living off of, you know, hate comment or trolling content. Um, but those are your rare exceptions, right? You don't see a lot of it. And very few people make it doing that. People don't buy what you do. They buy why. People do not buy what you do. They buy why. People do not buy your content, in this sense, buying viewing. People do not view your content because you are the, you're playing COD or you're playing Siege because you're being an FPS content creator. They view you because of why. Why are you doing this? Well, I want to be entertaining and you provide that entertainment or I want to, I want to help new players get better. So I'm going to give you some tutorials on how to get better. I, you know, I want to make the gaming community a better place. So I'm going to provide content to help make that happen. People buy why, not what. People buy why, not what. That is such a powerful message. Ingrain that into your brain and do not forget it. So... I need a whiteboard. I want to draw the circle for you guys. So have you guys ever heard of, uh, here we go. All right. So have you guys ever heard of the law of diffusion innovation? So two and a half percent are your innovators. 13 to 15% are your early adopters. And these people are your people that are your risk takers, right? Like they, they truly buy and consume products for you, for what you believe in. They, those are the people that are standing in line days before the new iPhone comes out to get it when they could wait a week and go buy it on a shelf, but they want to be the first. They want to be the supporter. They want to be your early foundation because why? Because they believe in what you do and why you do it. Not on the product, not on what you create, but why? And that's what drives those early innovators. And so these early innovators are going to be the people that push out. So first I need to talk about this. So there's a little gap between the 13 and 15% and the 34%, right? So your 34% is your early majority. This is where it hits big, right? So this is where your TikTok videos blow up viral or your YouTube videos go viral, etc. And so you need to convince not this 34%, not the other half of the 100%, but you need to convince the two and a half and the 15% on why your product is the best and why they should get it over the others, why it's better or different than the competition. And those people are gonna be your vets, right? So they're gonna vet it, they're gonna give you your views, they're gonna give you your support that you need that that 34% is then going to take the risk, right? So this 34%, your early majority, they're not, they're not your risk takers, right? They're not the ones that are gonna stand out in the line. They're the ones that are gonna go a week later and buy it off of the shelves because that's convenient for them. And not because they don't believe in you or they don't believe in your product, because they just don't trust either themselves or the company, or they don't know enough about it to make their own decisions, so they rely on this earlier percentage to make that decision for them. And then that carries over into your other 34%, and that's gonna be your late majority. 
And these are the people that are on the other side of the hill, right? So they're just a little bit later to the party. You know, they're going to be your people that buy the iPhone a couple of weeks later or a month later or, you know, a couple of months later, right? And so this mass majority, the the 68%, that's what feeds viralism, right? That's what makes people go viral. You know, only... 2.5, 15%, that's not going to make you viral or that's not going to give you the base and support that you need to give you the platform to get out your message to almost everybody that you can. So after you've reached the 2.5 to 15%, it carries on over into the 34 and the other 34%, the early and late majority. And then you have these other people, this huge gap. I mean, huge, like just imagine this, right? Huge gap. You got you can't even clear it with a car. And this is gonna be your last 15%, and that's gonna be your laggards. These are the people that are that are still using flip phones today because they just don't believe in new, you know, why do I need a new iPhone? This one's working fine for me. You know, they're lagging behind the majority, and it's it's not that they don't believe that that phone is better and that it can do a lot more things than their flip phone, but they just, they don't believe in it, man. They don't believe in the message that that company or brand is providing. And so eventually those people are going to, they're going to have to catch up, but it's going to be very, very late. So you don't want to worry about that 15%, right? You're always going to have that 15% that's hating on you, that doesn't believe in what you do is not there for the support and that's okay. So you just need to recognize where you're at on this list. What kind of person are you? Because everyone's a different stage of this eventually and different stages of their lives and different aspects. You know, you might be an innovator when it comes to technology, but you might be a laggard when it comes to cooking ware. You might still have the basic pots and pans at home and didn't know that Betty Crocker down the road has whipped up a cooking pan 9,000. You didn't even know that. So you just got to recognize that you're somewhere on this list in every category. I'm so bad at typing. You cannot reach the mass market success until you reach the early adopters. So that's your focus. When you're creating your brand and you're creating who you are and who you want to be to these people, you need to realize that only 15% of them are actually going to back you. That you can be the best damn, you can be Jesus walking on water. And only 15% of those people are truly going to believe in what you do and support you 100% support you a hundred percent. We've, we've talked about what your brand needs to be, how you can get it started. Right. And you recognize that the statistics of the amount of people that you need to reach with this. Right. So now you need to go back and reflect on your why. Need to think about it again. Why do you want to be a content creator? Why do you want to provide entertainment to this industry? Why do you want to provide inspiration to this industry? Why, why, why? Because when you figure out your why and you have a definite why, then it's a lot easier for those early innovators to grasp that recognize it, and then follow you through the fire and flames. Nike, for example. What's, what's Nike's logo? Everybody knows it. Just do it, right? But how many of you know what their actual slogan is? To bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world. Every athlete in the world. That's really compelling. That's their why. You know, that's why Nike does it to bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world. Why are you a shoe company? Why are you an athletic wear company to bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world? Very compelling answer, right? And then at the end of it, they they just had this little, little pizzazz, a little touch. And they're just like, damn, if you have a body, you're an athlete. So they just took their target audience, which was athletes, which was about this big. And then they said, "Mm -mm, everybody's an athlete. And so you just took your target audience and went, 
Now everybody is your target audience because if you have a body, which is everybody, you're an athlete. Is that not genius? That's fucking genius. And that's why they are a multi-billion dollar franchise because of the why. Not because they have good running shoes, not because they're the most innovative shoe company on the market. There's a billion other shoes that you could buy, but why do people choose Nike? Because of the brand that they have built through years and years of building to bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world. And you don't build a brand overnight. It takes months, if not years, to build your brand. And it's not easy. You're going to have people that discourage you. You're going to have people that tell you your brand vision is wrong, that you shouldn't be doing that. You have people telling you, why should you make the gaming community a better place? It's good how it is. I like it. You're going to have people that put you down. And that's okay because, you know, they're everywhere. You're going to have those people everywhere. So, you just need to realize that once you figure out the why, people are going to follow you. It's not the content that you make. All right, correction. There is a limit. There is a certain standard of quality of content that's to be expected, right? You know, somebody doesn't want to watch something that you recorded on your 1998 camcorder that you found in your attic, right? You know, there's a standard of quality of content. But once you meet that standard of quality of content, people get into the why. Why Why are you making this? Why should I watch this video? Why should I care if you slam some kids in siege? I don't. I do not care. Nobody cares. Why should I care if you're a champion in siege? Nobody cares. But if you change that to... I'm a champion in Siege. You should watch me play. To, I want to be the best player in Rainbow Six Siege, and I want to help you get there too. Bam, sold. A lot more compelling, right? A lot more compelling. People don't buy what you do. They buy why. And if that's not compelling, I don't know what is.